In this video, we will get an understanding of what we mean by bugs. The term bug was first used to describe more general types of defects in engineering systems. As a term in computing, it dates back to when computers were electromechanical devices. Insects would sometimes find their way into such devices and cause malfunctions. The image shows a page from a log book from 1947. It shows a dead moth that was removed from a computing device, having been the cause of a malfunction. The device was a Harvard Mark II electromechanical computer. It weighed 23 tons and was incredibly slow. Bugs are defects in your code. Such defects will result in your code either not running, or if it does run, then it may produce incorrect results. The two main types of bugs are flaws and errors. When there is a flaw in your code, the code still runs and still produces some result. But due to some flaw in the logic of the algorithm, the result is incorrect. When there is an error in your code, then either the code does not run at all, or it exits in an unexpected way. Flaws are often more difficult to fix than errors. Because with flaws, you will not get any error messages. It is up to you, the programmer, to figure out if the results you are getting are correct. Errors can be divided into two types, static and dynamic. Static errors can be detected before running your code. A common type of static error is a syntax error, such as a missing bracket. For compiled languages, static errors are also referred to as compile time errors. This is because they can be detected while compiling your code. Dynamic errors are only detected while your code is running. They are sometimes also referred to as runtime errors. Let's have a look at an example. The code contains three errors. Depending on the language and system being used to write the code, the errors may be detected in different ways. In this case, we will assume that the system detects two static errors and one dynamic error. The static errors will need to be fixed before the dynamic error can be discovered. The first error is in the second line of code. This is a static error. The error is because the variable c does not exist at that point in time. Variable c is only declared in the third line of code. The second error is the syntax error. It is due to the missing closing bracket in the third line of code. With such syntax errors, the system may not even be able to interpret your code. So the system may require the error to be fixed before it can do anything else. Once both static errors are fixed, the code can be executed. The first three lines of code will then be executed without any errors. When execution reaches the fourth line of code, it will discover a dynamic error. The code calls a function to calculate the length of a vector. A vector is a list of three numbers. But the code is passing in a single number to that function, not a vector. This will result in a dynamic error being generated. The process of fixing errors and flaws is called debugging. In general, when debugging, you will need to first fix the static errors, then fix the dynamic errors, and finally, you will need to detect and fix the flaws. The whole process is generally highly iterative. You write some code, then debug, then write more code, and debug again. Experienced programmers will tend to execute their code often, in order to discover bugs as soon as possible. Writing many lines of code without executing or testing will make debugging much more difficult. When debugging, you often want to see the value of a variable in memory. Programming languages will provide a function to display values in the console. For example, Python provides the print function. And JavaScript provides the console.log function. We will refer to it as printing a variable. In the example code, let's say that you want to see the value of the variable c. 
you can then insert an extra line of code to print C. Executing the code would display the value of C in the console. In Mobius, you will discover that each line of code that assigns a value to a variable has a print toggle button. Enabling this toggle button will print the variable value to the console. This makes printing a bit easier. There is no need to insert an extra line of code, just to print.